Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my complete Yai Miko guide. Yai is a character who came out a couple days ago, and I've been playing and testing her extensively since she first released. In my last video, I covered what I was running on Yai and centered the video around my initial thoughts and a showcase of Yai Miko. In this video, what I'm going to do is cover all the nuance in her kit, how to play her and build her efficiently, covering not only her different playstyles, but also every artifact set, artifact stats, how much energy recharge you need, her best weapons, and giving you guys an exact weapon ranking, best teams, advanced information, and so much more. This video took very long to make and it's coming out a bit later than what I had expected, mainly because I wanted to take as much time as possible to make sure that this guide is high quality. That being said, since Yai Miko is pretty new, if there's anything I want to add and any new updates to this guide, it will be in a pinned comment, so as always, be sure to check that. Before we begin, I want to give a special shout out and thanks to ZJF77 for helping me with the exact weapon ranking in this video. Also, as always, I do want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested, and with that being said, let's get into it. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is talk about Yai Miko's abilities and just general gameplay advice for this new character. While in a later section, I will go over more advanced tips and detailed like rotation guides, let's start by doing a quick rundown on her kit and how she's meant to be played. First of all, Yaimiko's elemental skill is an ability that has three charges and that places down these little uh, Sakura pillars that will passively deal electro damage when you're fighting an enemy. To be more precise, you can have three of these little pillars out at the same time, so you're gonna have to use your elemental skill three times to get the maximum amount, and then they will deal electro damage to one enemy. And the exact damage they deal actually scales with how many of them you have active, starting from level 1 to 2 to 3, and then if you unlock her second constellation, which we'll talk about later, you can go all the way up to level 4. Each of these pillars lasts for 14 seconds, which is honestly not bad, and the cooldown of every charge is quite short, being only 4 seconds. While this ability may seem pretty simple, there are some properties to it. For example, the way it works is when Yai Miko uses her skill, she will dash forward and leave a skill, a little pillar thing, where she lands. Because of that, it can be a bit weird to place them at exact locations, and you kind of need to get a feel for how her skill works. On top of that, if you place them too close to one another, they will actually destroy or one of the two will be destroyed as you can see here. Although through my many hours of playing her, I've noticed that this doesn't happen too much in practice, but it is something you need to keep in mind. Something that's quite important to know, however, is that since this ability has three charges and you can have three at the same time, which will increase the damage of all of them, you really want to maximize on that and go to your Yai Miko, use her when you have three charges ready, press your skill three times and let them deal damage. This does leave her vulnerable however, as it takes a bit of time to use your skill three times, obviously, and you don't have any invulnerability, no iframes during the cast of your skill, and so if you're not running a shield, you're gonna have to get used to this, maybe dash in between your skills, just to avoid getting hit, because it can be annoying to place three of them. Now moving on to your elemental burst, Yai Miko summons a powerful lightning strike, which does a decent amount of AoE damage. And while the area of effect isn't huge, it will still hit enemies that are like grouped together, so it can be nice to add some AoE to your kit. On top of just the first hit, you actually will deal even more damage and even higher scaling on the second part of this effect, which will basically just destroy every pillar from your skill and convert them into a lightning strike that will deal a significant amount of damage. Because of that, you always want to use your burst when you have three pillars active, as you will deal that initial hit and then do three more hits of electro damage that will all be stronger than the first one. The scaling on this ability, even at just level 7, as you can see is quite high, and so it is definitely an ability that you want to use when you have it. While it destroys the three casts of your elemental skill, the three pillars that are active, it will refund the charges of every single one that you destroy through your passive talent. Because of that, after using your burst, you're typically going to want to use your skill another three times immediately after to have your skill on field and assist your team or, you know, your DPS with that passive electro damage. Lastly, some things to consider about her burst is that the cooldown is very long, so 22 seconds is definitely something you need to play around as it is quite a long cooldown, and also the energy cost is very high with 90 total. While I addressed these concerns in my last video, so watch that if you haven't, I do want to emphasize that this is something we'll consider consider in the team section and something you have to build your team and artifacts around by generally pairing Yai Miko with another electro unit to alleviate this energy cost problem. Pairing her with someone like Raiden or Fischl can allow her to get those electro particles that she desperately needs to make this 90 energy cost something you can manage. Lastly, for a second passive talent, this just makes Elemental Mastery a decent substat on Yai Miko as it will increase the damage of your elemental skill by 0.15% of your elemental mastery. Now, while the relevance of elemental mastery depends on, you know, if you're proccing reactions or not, in general, this just makes Elemental Mastery an okay substat, but still not optimal for your Yai Miko. This can make her easier to build, but EM overall will still be about as good as like flat attack in terms of the damage that it buffs your elemental skill. Now to get a bit more into Yai Miko's playstyles, I do want to point out that a lot of her damage, as you can see, comes from her skill and her burst. Because of that, you can play her as a very efficient burst support, sub DPS, burst DPS, whatever you want to call it, who deals good passive damage from her skill, and then swaps in, uses her burst, which will be a nice spike of damage, and then also places her skill 
again and then swaps out and lets someone else carry. And also, if you want to use Yaimiko as an on-field auto attacker, in like a hyper carry team, I will cover that in this video as well, notably in the team comp section, but it isn't my personal favorite and not how I recommend playing Yai when compared to a burst build where she still does a lot of damage passively from her skills without needing to normal attack. That being said, Yaimiko is someone who requires more field time than someone like Fischl as she does take more time to set up by having to use her skill three times before and after her burst. And in case any of this was confusing, as always I will include a rotation showcase where I break it down in more details after I talk about Yai's builds. Before we do that however, I want to quickly tell you guys that Yaimiko's talent priority generally revolves around leveling your skill first, as that is a nice source of passive damage, and then your elemental burst after that. If you're normal attacking on Yaimiko, you can level them after, or you can ignore them if you're using her purely as a burst support. Now moving on to Yaimiko's builds, there's actually a lot of flexibility here, a lot of different and good ways to build her, so I really want to take the time to explain how you should be building this character. The first thing I want to say for her artifact sets is that there's many really good two pieces so that basically everyone can choose the best ones that they have or that they can obtain passively while farming for other characters. In fact, because Yaimiko doesn't have an amazing four piece in general, getting really good two pieces that you can mix and match depending on what substats you have and what sets you've already farmed for can be ideal for this character. In fact, many two pieces like the Reminiscence set and Gladiator, which are both two piece sets that give you 18% attack that you can use separately or together, are very good for obviously that attack percent. Another two piece like the Thundering Fury giving you 15% electro damage bonus is also very good, although farming that domain right now isn't really the most efficient, so if you have Thunder Fury, I recommend using the two piece, but if you don't, don't worry because there's many other good two pieces that you might already have or get while farming other domains. Another set that works very nicely is the two piece or the four piece of the Emblem of Severed Fate set, the two piece giving you 20% energy recharge, which if you need it is very good, and the four piece also gives you a lot of burst damage, scaling on the amount of ER that you have. While this isn't the best set overall, if your energy recharge is high depending on your team, and we'll cover how much ER you need in the next section, the four piece Emblem of Severed Fate can be quite efficient, and the two piece in general is just useful. Now while as you can see there are many really good options of two pieces you can run on her or even a four piece, I do want to say that generally running the two piece Reminiscence with two piece Gladiator for efficient artifacts that you can get by playing the game, Reminiscence which you'll get passively while farming Emblem for your other characters, and the Glad set which you get from bosses and from rerolling artifacts at the crafting table so they're quite efficient. And lastly another set worth mentioning is the four piece Thunder Soother if you are running an Electro team or an Electro charge team where you can maintain the Electro uptime on enemies. When you have the four piece it'll increase your damage to Electro affected enemies by 35% so it is quite nice. Keep in mind however that it is pretty niche and only fits certain team comps because oftentimes enemies won't always be affected by Electro so while this isn't a generalistic set it can be viable. I do want to say overall and I want to make it clear that the sets you pick should depend on what you have and the best substats for you as the difference between Thunder Fury, Reminiscence and the other two pieces that I mentioned are generally very minimal. Overall in case you're wondering your absolute best in slot two pieces while all the ones I mentioned are very good is generally going to be the two piece Reminiscence with either two piece Glad for just a bunch of attack or two Reminiscence with two piece Thundering Fury. Now while they're both very similar in strength which one is best in slot will depend on your team and for example how much attack percent you gain from other sources and most importantly on the substats that you have and which ones are better. And lastly I very quickly wanted to add that while you will be sacrificing your damage a viable build in certain teams where you're using Yai in a very supportive playstyle the four piece Millilith can be viable as it will have permanent uptime and give your team attack percent but it isn't my personal favorite for Yai it's just a viable option in certain teams. Now moving on to your artifact stats what are you looking for on Yai? Well first of all as with many burst DPSs or sub DPS supports whatever you want to call them you're looking for a lot of damage and also enough energy recharge to spam your burst on cooldown. To maximize Yai's damage you obviously want crit rate, crit damage and attack percent whenever you can get it. That being said your first requirement should be enough energy recharge to use your burst when you need it. While the exact energy recharge amounts highly highly depend for Yai because it depends on how many electro characters you run with her and your teams and rotations and all of that stuff that I'll talk about in a bit, I do want to give you guys at least a general guideline. First of all I want to say I highly recommend running Yai Miko with at least one other electro character to allow her to get enough energy as she does not generate enough by herself unless you run an ungodly amount of energy recharge which will therefore make you lose out on a lot of damage. Because of that pairing her with someone like Raiden or Fischl can greatly help alleviate your energy problems and allow you to use your burst much more often. A general range I recommend with another electro character is anywhere from 150 to 170 energy recharge. Obviously it can be less and it can be more as energy recharge thresholds and ranges are always weird and variable so I highly recommend you test out what works for you. Other than that though it is quite straightforward. While energy recharge 
crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent are the substats you want on every piece. For your main stats, you're looking for an electro damage goblet, a crit rate or a crit damage circlet, and either attack percent or energy recharge on your sands. Attack percent sands in general will give you a lot more damage, so I tend to recommend it, but if you do need energy recharge, feel free to run it on your sands if you just don't have enough on your substats. Now moving on for Yaimiko's weapons, I want to give you guys a very straightforward breakdown of what her best weapons are, while also including a detailed weapon ranking so you know the best weapon for you. I want to start by simply saying that Yaimiko has really good 5 star options, really good 4 stars, and also an amazing free to play option so everyone can have a good weapon. Generally, what you need to know is that her best installed weapon is the new one that just came out, as it has a really good effect for Yaimiko, buffing her when she uses her skill, and also a massive amount of crit damage on the stat, making it just her best installed overall. That being said, while the weapon banner is good, it's definitely not something that is needed by any means, as she has many other good options. For example, there are many 4 star options like the Witsith or Solar Pearl that are absolutely amazing if you have them. The Witsith is my personal favorite 4 star, especially with the refinement, as this weapon has good stats by giving you a lot of crit damage, and also an amazing effect that gives you nice amounts of burst damage when you swap into your Yai. In fact, when you swap into her, she'll be buffed for 10 seconds out of 30 seconds, because it has a 30 second cooldown, giving you either attack percent, elemental mastery, or elemental damage. All three of these can be very useful for Yai, and increase your damage significantly. Similarly, the Solar Pearl is amazing as well, as this weapon gives you crit rate, and a nice effect increasing your elemental skill and elemental burst damage if you weave in normal attacks in your rotation. However, and this is quite important, while Witsith and Solar Pearl are very good and can be the best 4 stars with the refinement, if you're lower refinement on these weapons and just in general, the free to play option that is available right now through an event, for Yai Miko, the Oath Sworn Eye, which you can refine for free once again through this event, can be amazing. The reason this weapon is good is because it gives you a lot of attack, but also, and especially, enough energy recharge to where you no longer need to stack it on your artifacts, and it can focus on getting more offensive substats like crit and attack percent. Lastly, as always, 5 star catalysts in general are really good. Uh, the Skyward Atlas I personally love, as it has an insanely high base attack, a good attack percent stat, and a great effect. And the Lost Prayer is also good for similar reasons, just good stats with crit rate and an okay effect even if you don't stack it fully as it's kind of inconsistent in that regard. Now as you can see and I hope I did a good job of explaining that there's a lot of good weapons for Yai, a lot of very viable ones that are similar in strength and highly dependent on once again your teams and the refinement rank of your weapon. With that out of the way I'm gonna now put a weapon ranking on screen. Now I do want you guys to know as you look at this weapon ranking that it's very important to keep in mind that this should just be used as a general idea as the exact weapon ranking can highly vary based on your current artifact what substats you have and what you need, and many other variables. This is a good indication though of what weapons are good for you, and what weapons you should use if you have them. I do want to say, overall, Yai Miko has a lot of really good options, with the 5 star catalysts in general, like Atlas, Lost Prayer, and her new signature weapon, all being very good, while also having amazing 4 star options, like Witsith, Solar Pearl, and the new free to play option, the Oath Sworn Eye. For other weapons on this list that I didn't mention, the Hakushin Ring has its situations, in certain like Electro teams it can be good, and the Black Cliff Gate is viable, but it does cost Star Glitter and isn't quite as good as other options, so I don't really like it. And lastly, I do want to emphasize that the current event weapon, as you can see from the weapon ranking, is quite efficient on Yai Miko, so I highly recommend getting it if you don't have a better weapon. Personally, I tend to use my Yai on a Witsith R5 because I have it already refined, and I do really like this playstyle of a lot of burst damage in a 10 second window, while also just providing me with consistent stats. Alright, now moving on, I very quickly want to talk to you guys about some advanced tips to get much more value out of your Yai Miko. Before we begin, one thing you should know is that your elemental skill actually does not snapshot. If you don't know what snapshotting means, it's basically a property that some abilities have to factor in buffs for their entire duration. Since Yai Miko does not have this, this means that her elemental skill will only deal bonus damage, it'll only be buffed when your Yai Miko is buffed. For example, if you use Bennett's burst and then Yai Miko's skill, it'll deal amplified damage when you're on Yai Miko inside of the burst, but if you leave it or swap or anything like that, your damage will go back to normal. Next up, I want to give you some tips regarding how to use your elemental skill and your rotations. As you know, Yai Miko needs to use her skill a total of 6 times for like 1 rotation, 3 before her burst and 3 after. With that established, I believe it's optimal to use your skill 3 times initially while you're setting up as early as possible. By doing so, your Yai Miko is gonna have her pillars out on field, dealing passive electro damage while you swap characters or DPS on someone else. In this example rotation, I use my Yai Miko skill 3 times initially, then swap to my other characters, 
and even swirl the Electro with Kazuha and then go back into her user burst and then her skill three more times. While your exact rotation will vary from team to team, I believe it's essential to use your skill as early as possible and then either use your burst immediately or wait a bit, swap characters, set everything up and then go back to your Yai, use your burst and skill three times and then continue with your rotation. Also, while I mentioned this briefly earlier in the video, I do want to re-emphasize that when you use your elemental skill, you are vulnerable, so regarding how to use this ability, be sure to do it at a safe time or to weave in dodges between every cast. Another quick tip in case you don't know is just that you can control in which way your skill is going using directional keys on your keyboard or whatever controller you're using. While this sounds simple and it is, it's just a good thing to know for repositioning. Also you can do this against enemies like uh, you can kind of counteract the auto targeting as in let's say I want to use my skill but I don't want to dash towards the slime I want to dash away. You can just hold S on your keyboard and then just do that and as you can see I did dash away despite there being enemies in front of me. Lastly while this doesn't really belong in this section I do want to just re-emphasize somewhere in the video that you should be making sure you have enough or more than enough if you just want to be safe energy recharge than you need. I want to re-emphasize this because I've noticed a lot of people like complaining about Yaimiko's energy problems and a lot of people not getting the most value out of her. The simple way to circumvent this issue is by running her with an electro battery and having enough energy recharge for you. While I give you guys a range in the artifact section being around 150 to 170 if you have to go more because you're not getting your burst back on cooldown, then feel free to do so. Next up, I want to talk about Yaimiko's constellations as I've been getting bombarded with questions about whether or not you should pull for them and how important certain milestones like C2 are for Yaimiko. Her first constellation is pretty straightforward. It gives you 8 energy every single time your burst activates a thunderbolt. You can do that 3 times if you have 3 skills active. And so you can obviously proc this effect 3 times with 3 casts of your elemental skill before your burst, giving you a total of 24 energy just for free, which is honestly quite nice. This allows you to run less energy recharge and effectively makes your burst cost 24 less energy, so 66 instead of 90. For your second constellation, this is a big one that a lot of people tend to like, as it increases the damage of your skill, making them start at level 2 when they're created, so as you can see, they start at level 2 now and they can go all the way up to level 4, therefore increasing their scaling, while also increasing the max range, the attack range, of every single pillar. Increasing it by 60% is honestly quite nice and and a really nice not only quality of life but also damage increase for your skill. Personally I don't think this is as mandatory as some people make it seem but it is a good constellation overall, one of Yaimiko's best ones so you can get it if you want. Your C3 and 5 increase your talent levels as always and your C4 gives you some electro damage bonus to all your party members. This effect is procced when your skill hits an opponent, so it honestly procs quite often. It lasts for 5 seconds, but with 3 casts of your skill, they're constantly going to be dealing that electro damage, procking this effect and buffing every single electro carry in your team. Because of that, while this is good for Yaimiko herself, giving her an okay damage increase, it becomes especially potent when paired with many other Electro characters, thinking of someone like Raiden and Sara. Because of that, the value of this constellation is variable, but it is especially nice in Electro teams. Lastly, for your 6th constellation, it's kind of similar to Raiden C2, which kind of shows how good Raiden C2 is, as it makes your elemental skill ignore the defense or 60% of the defense of opponents. This is a huge DPS increase to your Yai's overall damage, as her skill is a huge part of her kit. That being said, her C6 isn't my personal favorite as it's not as game breaking as some others, but it is still definitely a pretty good upgrade to your overall damage. To conclude on this section, I do want to say overall that I think Yai is fine at C0, but if you want to get constellations, I say C2, like 1 and 2 together, is probably the ideal place to stop if once again you want to pull for more than one. Alright, now moving on, let's finally talk about Yai and Miko's teams. This is a very important section because having the right team for your Yai, a team where she fits, can let you get the most value out of this character. While I'm going to cover some specific synergies and general team recommendations, I want to start by saying one important thing for pretty much every team. Yai Miko is someone who obviously will apply Electro through her skill and her burst. Because of that, you want to pair her in teams where she has synergy and doesn't disrupt the reactions that they're creating. In fact, an Electro character like Yai typically wants to be paired in either Electro teams or reaction teams that can use Electro, thinking of something like Electro Charged. On top of that, something you should keep in mind is that Yai Miko typically wants to be paired with at least one other Electro character to give her Electro Particles and help alleviate her very high energy cost on her burst, which is in fact 90. And so with that initial information out of the way, what synergies does she have? have. Well, one team that I personally really like for Yai is pairing her in a Electro team with someone like Raiden Shogun. While you can do a fully mono Electro team where you're running three Electro characters and then a flex slot at the end, usually in a Nemo support if you can, someone like Jean works very well as a healer and Verdescent Venerer user, which will come in clutch as it buffs your Electro damage. 
However, there are other options. Pretty much any Anemo character can work if you don't need a healer, and if you do and aren't running Jean, someone like Sucrose with a prototype Amber can actually work quite well in this team. Lastly, for your Electro slot, while this team works very well, it is quite flexible. Sara is especially good if you have her 6 constellation, and that's when I really started recommending her, as her 6 constellation in particular is what really will buff uh, your entire team's Electro damage. That being said, if you don't have it or want to run other options, someone like Fischl can work quite well. Now, while I mentioned Mono Electro team, Teams, you can actually run Yai just with Raiden Hyper Carry in general. My personal favorite is running Raiden with Kazua Bennett, which is already an insanely good team just on its own, and then Yai Miko can come in to assist your team from off field by giving them passive electro damage through her skill, and then that powerful burst, which will be amplified with Kazua and Bennett. While Kazuma and Bennett are very high value supports, so you don't need to use them on this team if your other team needs them, for example, in the Abyss, this general Raiden Hyper Carry team does work well. Raiden Shogun is an amazing Electro unit who will give a ton of energy to your team throughout her burst, while also being a good DPS on field in a Hyper Carry team, especially if you have her C2, but even just at C0, like mine is, you can get a lot of value in this team by just dealing a lot of damage from on field, giving that energy to your whole team through her burst, and then also enable your Yai Miko to support you from off field. Now, concluding on this team, I actually want to move on to probably my favorite overall, which is a Yai Miko Taser team. I'm a big fan of Taser teams in general, and there's many variations of them, but running Yai Miko actually gives you a nice boost in single target damage, although she does require a lot of field time. Because of that, while you can place her in a traditional Taser team like this one, I do personally prefer Beto in this team for AoE damage, whereas in this team right here, Yai Miko can shine a bit better. In fact, Yai Miko synergizes very well with this team, which I'm going to take the time to explain as initially it might look a bit weird. The reason this team works so well as a taser team is because someone like Kokomi can come in as your hydro applier and taser applier in general. You can use Kokomi with something like the clam set, auto attack inside of her burst, which will apply hydro while also enabling your off field carries like Fischl and Miko to do good amounts of electro damage and apply the electro charge reaction. The reason why Kokomi is used here is because Sing Chu, while he is a very powerful hydro support, is not only a valuable one, so you can use him on your other team, but also since Yai Miko takes so much field time, Sing Chu will lose out on some of his rain swords during Yai Miko's animations of casting her skill six times, three before and after her burst, and then also obviously using her burst. Kokomi on the other hand, while you can use her on field, she can also apply hydro from off field consistently through her elemental skill, which will just stay there for a while. On top of that, using Kokomi here actually allows you to have a healer, which the other taser team that I showed won't really have unless you run a prototype amber on Sucrose. Also, something else kind of small to keep in mind is that either of your catalysts in this team can actually run a Hakushin ring, which can be nice, for example, for Kokomi, who would want the energy recharge and buffing your team's electro and hydro damage. Lastly, if it wasn't obvious, Kazuo is here to swirl both Hydro and Electro and similarly increase the damage of your entire team. And overall, I do like Yai Miko, as you can see, in just Electro-based teams, running an Electro reaction or running her with other Electro characters, such as someone like Raiden Shogun. Now, she can also be viable in a double Electro core, running Yai and Fischl in teams that want two Electro units, although it's not typically my favorite. Personally, I have tested running her with someone like Hutao, and while I did manage to clear the Abyss relatively fast, so it is viable, it was not my favorite team, and I would rather pair Hutao with other units, unless you just want to play Yai with her, then by all means go ahead. Lastly, for people who want to run Yai Miko as a main DPS, a hyper carry, then you can kind of run the Raiden Shogun route, but replace Raiden with another unit, in the sense that you'll be running, you know, this standard sort of lineup for an Electro team, and then a second Electro unit, either Sara C6, ideally if you have it, or someone like Fischl can also work very well in a team like this. Personally, I tend to use Yai Miko as a burst damage dealer, a burst support if you will, or burst carry, whatever you want to call it, who will deal good damage from off field. All right, now, with that being said, I'm going to get into a Yai Miko showcase. This is just going to be one clear of floor 12 in a Raiden hyper carry team with my Raiden C0 and my Yai C0. This is going to be a team that can showcase her potential. And I do want to point out that initially I wasn't going to do a Yai Miko showcase because I did one in my last video, but I feel like for a complete guide, it's only right to show what I talked about. My Yai Miko isn't perfect. Her talent levels are only seven since the boss just came out and I can't get them higher, but she does have good investment with an R5 Widsith and two Thunder Fury to Reminiscence on good artifacts. With that being said, I hope the guide was helpful and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go. Let's do it. 
So yeah, that's about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was tons of fun to make because I really like Yaimiko and I enjoyed talking about her, but it did take a very long time. So I apologize for the delay on this video as I wanted to get it out like two days earlier. That being said, I didn't want to rush anything. And so I hope I did a good job at covering everything you need to know about Yaimiko. As always with new characters, be sure to check the pinned comment if anything changes as I want to make sure all my information is correct. With that being said, I want to end it at that because this video is getting really long. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to sub if you're new and follow me on Twitch. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.